say? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I was looking today about Arafah and especially about, not so much about the day, but about the place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, saying so many things about how he likes to see the servants that are there and he forgives them. I was thinking, I, I understand what makes uh, people holy and special, like about awliya Allah, we, we talk about that a lot. I'm asking for places, what is it that makes them to become holy and special in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah has chosen those places. So it must be some secret that is there. Allah has chosen those places not because of those places also, but again because of Hazrat Insan that is there. The Arafah is a holy place from the time of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. That was when he met our mother, Hazrat Hawa. Why is Kaaba is Sharif? It is holy. That's not the original Kaaba that we have. <coughs> the original Kaaba is not there anymore. The original Kaaba, originally, was there from the time of Adam alayhi salam. That Adam alayhi salam don't think he went to Arafah also to meet his wife. So he's there to make the Hajj. Do you understand? Because the original Kaaba is Sharif. It came from the paradises. It was not made from this stone, this earth. It was made from heavenly jewels that was there from the time of Adam alayhi salam. Through all 124,000 prophets, it is obligation for all believers to go and to make the hajj that is there. In the time of the flood, then when the flood happened, and that flood is not the natural water. The flood, it is the azab. It is a water that was burning. It is one of the waters, as the awliya Allah is saying, one of the waters from hell that is uh, released there at that time. And when that water was covering through the whole earth and Nuh salam was in the ship with 73 people and with all the animals that are there, Male and female, not any time they want to say they are male, any time they want to say they are female. Even when they were circling, they came to the Kaaba. Somebody stand over there, maybe the door shouldn't open and shut so many times when the sohbet is going on. Later they can go in and out if it's necessary. When everything was covered in water, even the ship of Nuh, Nuh alayhi salam had to circle around that area there. Seven times. He was known even in the earlier books what he was called. Today, it is even there in the, uh, in the Bible. I'm not going to say it's the Injil Sharif because Injil Sharif um, also has been taken. What is now there is it's not the Injil Sharif. Traces of that is there. But they're called by different names. Bakka, this, that. So, this is, Allah has chosen that, but it is obligation then for the believers to go and obligation now for holy ones to go there and to continue to bless the place. So, inshallah, one day we will go there. The place was still holy until mankind made it dirty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sent His most beloved one in the Ahir Zaman to go and to clean the house, to make it uh, presentable again. For us to understand the actions that is outside, it is supposed to give us an understanding of the belief that is inside the obligations of Islam, the obligations of Iman and the obligations of Ihsan, they are there 
these are still obligations. What you do outside is supposed to reflect what is inside. If it's not reflecting what is inside, then it doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just a physical action, a ritual that doesn't mean anything. It means something. It's meaning if Allah gives us an um, obligation to do, a duty, something to obey, its meaning is endless. The meaning of standing up is endless. The meaning of bowing down is endless. The meaning of making sujood is endless. The meaning of tawaf is endless. For those who say there's no meaning, you just do. Donkey can also circle around. Hmm? Donkey can also stand up straight. Maybe they can bow down. They can bow down. These donkeys, they are more uh, intelligent these days than humans. Humans don't want to bow down. So as Shaykh Afandi and Shaykh Maulana are saying all their lives to understand that that, the Kaaba Sharif that is there, that is known as the Baitullah. But don't think that that is the house of Allah. Don't think Allah is living in that house. Hasha, Allah is about everything. Allah is not in need of anything. But that is symbolizing our heart. The throne. Don't think also Allah is sitting on that chair on that throne. Like so many square heads are saying. But there are certain things that Allah is saying, this is mine. My presence should be there, nothing else. So we clean the Kaaba from the outside idols. We need to clean this Kaaba from the inside idols. Then that time, you are not going to wait once a year to say, here I am, O oh my Lord. As the Ahli Sufi are saying, we need to say that every moment, every day. Five times prayer. At least we're going to say, here I am, I leave everything. Here I am for you. And when you are understanding that your Lord is looking at you, watching you, that is Ihsan, you come to that high level of understanding, you cannot just do anything that you want to. You cannot. We did not sign any agreement. We didn't say to Allah, I want to be man or woman. I want to be rich or poor, black or white. What price can we put from one breath that Allah is giving us? How much thankfulness we have to give to our Lord now? <clears throat> so when we understand how much Allah has blessed us, then that time we are going to be aware Allah is watching. Allah is watching. We have to be careful. Because whatever that He's telling us to do, it is for our own sake. It is not to punish us. It is not to make us into a tight situation. It is to give us the best of this world, best of the hereafter. If we don't decide to follow that, which Allah gives us the right to, maybe in this world, there are consequences. In this world, we know there are consequences to everything that we do. You cannot say when you're young, I can do whatever I want, I can drink, I can smoke, I can do whatever I want, and there are no consequences which country you're from, that says you can do whatever you want. There's, no, there's going to be consequences. Whether it's from the law, or from your health, or from your mental health, don't think these are not tied together too. Don't think you can eat unhealthy, take drugs, and it's not going to affect the way that you, your mental health is going to be. Maybe not today, definitely tomorrow. Definitely. You think you want to be more happy than other people? You're going to take drugs? Yeah, you can be more happy now. Later, you're going to be in trouble. Later, you're going to be miserable. Later, you're never going to find happiness, even if it's in front of you, because you use up all the happiness already, when you're not supposed to. Take advantage of your youth before you reach old age. This is holy advice. Take advantage of your health before the sickness comes to you. Don't believe in this system. You believe in it whether you're coming from it or not. If you want to believe, go ahead. You pay the price. Now, you're going against what the Prophet is saying. Instead of taking advantage of this youth before old age, now in the youth you waste it. So people get old really fast. 
by the time they're 20 years old, 30, they're old. Old meaning what? No taste, no feeling, huh? no happiness, complaining, all, like old people, grouchy old people. Everything grouchy, little bit grouchy. Think, think, and put it in your life. This religion is not just for you to think, it is for you to understand. You understand means you put it in your life. You understand means you put it in your heart. Once it beats from your heart, and then every part of your body must resonate with that. From your feet to your head, it must follow that. You don't want to follow, don't follow. But there will be consequences. Later when there are consequences, don't blame anyone. Don't say, oh, I pray so hard. I do this and I do that. Yeah. You take that knife, you poke it in your eye, and then say, Astaghfirullah, one billion times, eyesight is going to come back. Or you think, what, religion is magic? No, no, just go meet a sheikh, open his hand, a miracle is going to happen. Mashallah. Miracle only going to happen when something wrong is happening. But when you want to use for something right, why is no miracle? Why you cannot, one day you don't believe, next day you wake up to believe? One day you don't practice, next day why you don't believe? Tomorrow maybe a miracle is going to happen to me, I'm going to practice. My heart is going to change. Why you don't believe in that? Death is real. It's very real. It's not real to us. We are very removed from it. Nothing in this country especially, whatever we do every day is connected to it. If it's not connected, then we're going to learn it in a very hard way. We see it in the news all the time, but we are disconnected because our heart is dead towards it. Why the heart becomes dead? How the heart becomes dead? How the heart that is in the middle of a zikr becomes dead? How? How can a heart become dead? One of the ways that the heart becomes dead is when you laugh too much. Simple. Who said this? Who said this? Holy Prophet like said to Islam said this. It says, don't laugh too much. Because too much laughter kills the heart. What happens when your heart is killed? What happened? No taste. No sympathy, no empathy, no feeling. And then you're going to do things just to have a feeling. The curse is on our young now. It's not the older ones, the young. They even would self-mutilate just to have a feeling. Look to see how we are living. Look to see how children are living. What are they living for? <coughs> Let me tell you what we're living for in this, in this system. Fun and games. You're raising your children to, be, to have their lives filled with fun and games, not responsibility. Responsibility is not saying you have to be responsible, you have to be responsible, you have to be... No, no, no. It's not. It's not talking, it's not lecturing. You understand? You have to live it. You have to do it. Up to a certain age, they don't even question you. Whatever you do, they do. They see you're doing, they will do it. Not what you say so much. What you say after a while, they forget. They don't believe. They will rebel. But if you do, and they follow, and they start following, difficult for them to rebel against that because it's in the system already. To do. Now, why is this important? Islam is always about jamaat. How many times do you have to say, if you are the strongest sheep, but you're not part of the flock, the wolf will get you. So easy. If you are the weakest sheep, but you belong to the flock, the wolf cannot enter. If you think I'm exception, go ahead and try. But is it worth it? 
really no one can say in this country, I'm sorry, I don't have a choice. You cannot. You will be punished if you say that. Because if anywhere in this whole world right now, where anyone has a choice, it is in this country. Other countries cross the border, they have no choice. Really, they have no choice. We know people who have no choice, they're on the streets. Mm -hmm. Their children are starving, they have no choice. We're crying day and night for them. Thinking how to solve them, how to pull them, what to do. Are you part of this? Worry, this thinking, this work? Or is tariqat you coming once in a while making zikr? Then that faith is going to be once in a while. That once in a while faith is not strong enough. Let me tell you, it's not. If you are here and you're not committed, it's not going to be strong. It's all about commitment. What's so special about here? You're asking about holy places. This place became holy because of Shah Fendi. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates in its, in its uh, how you say, originality, it cannot be not holy. Mankind makes it more holy, or mankind is going to make it less holy. Yes? Sheikh Fendi founded this place by permission and by order from the Holy Prophet, let's say 11, 12 years ago. What is it for? It is for us, it is for our children. Are we using it for us? Ask yourselves, are we using it for our children? What does it mean, using it for us or our children? What do we have to do? This question we've talked about in a thousand different ways in these 10 years. You cannot say, I don't know. None of you can say that. Now the onus is on you. Responsibility is on you now. That much you put in, that much you're going to get. You don't put nothing. What are we supposed to do? We're here to give. And this, keeping ourselves and our children safe, is just the very beginning of what we have to do. It's not even advanced. The very beginning. There are other things that we have to do that is for us, for this ummah in this Ahir Zaman. How we can reach there if this base is not there? What we are waiting for? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for before we run to Huck? Are we waiting for the skies to crack open? For the earth to part? For the seas to take over? Don't worry, that's going to happen too. And when it happens, and then we're running, as Allah says, over and over and over again, it's too late. While they are disputing, while you're arguing, while you're thinking about it, while you're arguing even amongst each other in your head, everything is over already. And suddenly, we find ourselves in trouble. Am I scaring you with this? If you're scared with this, good, you should be scared. What is it about Americans that puts fear in our hearts anyway? Nothing. We're living in the greatest nation in the world. Nothing puts fear in our heart unless IRS gets after us. Taxes, yes, I know. That gets you scared. Police, even police, you don't get scared too much because you can hire a lawyer and you can do something. Even with IRS, you can hire a lawyer and they can try to do something, cut a deal. So there's a lot of confidence in this country. No, we don't fear Allah. If you don't fear Allah, at least fear a little bit what shaitan and dajjal can do to us in these days. Fear that. That is a fear. So, this is for you and for me. The days of Hajj, they are here. Eleven years pass, and Sheriff and his Urs and the Hajj is coming together. There's a very big meaning to that. There's a very big secret to that. Who is asking? Who wants to know? None. Who is sleeping? Everyone. You're only going to wake up 
inconvenience bites you somewhere. But we're here to ask for more knowledge about this, more knowledge about ourselves, more knowledge about our Shaykh, more knowledge about Allah. Yeah. He came to set this up and he left. Now we're continuing, more we can do, more we should. Should, we should make the intention, inshallah. Just as we're cutting the animal tomorrow, just as they had thrown the stones at Jamrat at Shaitan, we ask that all our wrong characteristics we throw back to Shaitan. Amen. That our ego, we sacrifice it for Allah's sake. Amen. We make the promise, inshallah, in the year that is coming, that we become better, we become more stronger in the way of haq that we're not scared we will not fear from our own selves to do what is right may allah forgive me and bless you al fatiha assalamu alaikum